Hello, I'm Greg Jamian and thank you for watching Boomer Health at Home, the show where we explore the most relevant healthcare topics impacting the baby boomer generation today. As more and more baby boomers seek answers to many times difficult healthcare questions, our goal is to provide ideas, tips, and cutting edge solutions that will help improve your everyday life and health. It is our hope that you find the following information helpful as you sit back and watch Boomer Health at Home. Hello, and welcome to Boomer Health. I'm Maggie Ornazian, Director of Nursing at Ameristaff Nursing Services. Today I'm joined with Megan Gerben, Clinical Nurse Supervisor of Ameristaff Nursing Services. So with all the cold weather and the ice and the snow coming about, we thought today would be a good time to talk about trauma yes. and trauma in the older adult population. Yes. Hi Megan, how are you? I'm good, Maggie, how are you? Good. So which group of people should we consider to be the older adult population? So based on medical standards, journals, that type of stuff, they use 65 and older, which is a lot of people know because of the laws and what you get to get after age 65. So 65 is the magic number. Okay. And what type of traumas can this age population kind of incur? So they get the same traumas as everyone else, falls, car accidents, the stuff that can be a little bit unavoidable, slipping okay. on ice, that type of stuff. They do tend to do a little bit less of the risky, there's less gunshot wounds, burns, those types of things. Um, not to say that, you know, people aren't climbing up on their roofs and hanging Christmas lights and slippers. Please stop uh. doing that, people. Scares the nurses, we need a safety net. <laughs> I have seen some pretty scary stuff out there, but they tend to have a little bit less of that. Um, falls are the biggest one for older adults okay. in the aging population. Um, there are 28,000 out of 34,000 that are over 65 are the ones that die. So it wow. is a little bit worse when you get older, when you okay. slip and fall. Okay, and what makes this age group more at risk for death from certain injuries like from a fall? So as you get older, your body just, it doesn't heal as well. You don't have those beautiful, you know, things when you were younger that you just bounce right back and pop back up. Um, you have a lot of things called comorbidities or all those chronic conditions that people get later in life. You have high blood pressure, your arteries start to clog up a little bit with all that cholesterol and fat that we love to eat. Um, you get some, some patients have diabetes, there's a bunch of different stuff that just makes it harder to heal, so okay. you can't heal as fast or as well as you used to. Yeah, you hear a lot, um, at least within an elderly community, a lot of people will say, I was never the same after my fall, yes. or I was never the same after my car accident. Um, from your nursing standpoint, would you say that an in-hospital rehab post-trauma like that is something that would help an elderly patient? It does help. Okay. A lot of times it depends on what you qualify for. There's different standards with insurance companies. Okay. Um, you have to meet certain things, so work as hard as you can with physical therapy, occupational therapy when they come to see you in the hospital. Okay. And then if you can qualify for a rehab program, it's either going to be inpatient or a subacute rehab. Um, okay. Both of them are fantastic. All Inpatient, right. it's going to be a little more intense, and they will get you bouncing back on your feet a little bit faster. Oh, great. As okay. long as you work hard. You have to work hard at okay. it. Okay, so you've got to put the time Stay in. Stay positive. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the same population then, while they're in the hospital, deal with pain. And pain is a big thing, um, especially around Michigan and the opioid crisis and things like that. Yes. Um, but with other comorbidities, like you said, an elderly person may react differently to certain pain medications. How does that work? And then who kind of prescribes that and follows that patient through this course? 
So initially we'll be prescribed pain medicine because falling down and breaking your hip is not very pleasant. It does hurt. <laughs> um, usually it's you know the cute little 90 year old woman that's telling me no I just need a Tylenol. Just a little Tylenol to take the edge off. Okay. They will give you something stronger. It is extremely painful. Mm -hmm. We will start to taper down those medications and bring you down to a safer level because of that opioid crisis. Okay. We don't want people getting addicted to these pain medicines. You won't be prescribed an extended length of time anymore. It's seven okay. days worth of pills and then you have to follow up at your doctor. There are specific doctors. There's PMR doctors, pain medicine rehabilitation doctors now that actually should be the ones that are prescribing this for you. They're okay. watching your rehabilitation. They're the ones that are helping you through this process. So once they say you need to stop taking these, you shouldn't jump to another doctor and try to get more. It's extremely important that they figure out, well, why are you still having pain? You're off these medications now. Is there an underlying problem that we just missed? So a lot of times, if you keep taking the pain medicine, you might actually miss something that's still wrong, that's still going oh, on. Oh, okay, very interesting. So there is a method behind the madness, there as they is, say. There is, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there any certain medications that an elderly person would take or the population takes that maybe can make any type of injuries worse, like falls? So there are medications that can make things worse. A lot of times it's blood thinners. A lot of the older adult populations on blood thinners, not to knock them, they're beautiful, they save a lot of lives, they you know, stop a lot of disability, like not having a stroke, wonderful thing. But when you hit your head on a blood thinner, it can be extremely detrimental, it can cause a bad bleed. So if you or I fell on the ice, we smacked our head, we may end up with a concussion, maybe a small little brain bleed. If you're on a blood thinner, it's going to go wild and just keep bleeding. So it's extremely important that you get in. It's a medical emergency. Okay, so something thinners. that is just a small little scrape on a blood thinner might be a reason to go seek medical treatment. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm, very interesting. So what makes this certain population more at risk for falling? So the evils of aging is the biggest okay. thing. You start to lose your coordination, balance may not be as good. Your eyesight, you may have cataracts, macular degeneration, something to where you're not seeing as well as you used to. Okay. Um, your reaction time slows. There's a lot of those just horrible aging processes that are terrible and then there's other things like if you're diabetic and you have neuropathies you may not feel things as well as you used to your sensory is off you may have to use a walker cane there's a lot that can lead up to falling when you're older okay so you mentioned walkers and canes so are those assisted devices to help you not fall yes okay so if you've been prescribed them you should use them but use them correctly learn how to use them um, Follow along with your physical therapist, occupational therapist. They will train you the correct way how to use them. A lot of people think that then they're doing fine and they can just set it to the side and just go that short distance. And those are usually the people <laughs> that we find that they fell and okay. their device was sitting right next to them. Yeah, I was trying to get to my walker and that's why I fell. Yes, okay, yes. Okay, absolutely. All right, mm -hmm. great. Well, thank you, Megan, for being here today and thank you for all this wonderful information. You're welcome. I'd like to thank AmeriCare for letting us do this today. If you guys have any more questions or need any other information, please contact myself or Megan at AmeriCare at 248-288-2270. Thank you again and everyone have a happy holiday.